Around the world, countries are embarking on ambitious projects to build entirely new megacities from scratch. One such city, built for millions of people, boasts modern infrastructure, world-class amenities, and plenty of space, but its massive streets remain almost empty. Meanwhile, in the middle of the desert in Egypt, a new megacity is taking shape, set to house 6.5 million people and feature the tallest skyscraper in the world. However, as of today, no one has moved in yet, and it remains to be seen whether this project will succeed in attracting inhabitants. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the mysterious world of planned cities and investigate whether they're living up to expectations. First up is Naypyidaw, the new capital city of Myanmar. This unique metropolis was constructed from scratch in just 10 years, between 2002 and 2012. Despite its impressive infrastructure, including vast highways and grand government buildings, Naypyidaw has struggled to attract inhabitants and remains one of the world's emptiest capital cities. Today, Naypyidaw stands as Myanmar's third largest city by area, boasting impressive infrastructure and all the amenities expected of a capital city. However, despite its grandeur, Naypyidaw has earned a reputation as an eerie ghost capital, with far fewer inhabitants than anticipated. Its purpose also remains shrouded in mystery, with some questioning the government's motives for building a new capital city from scratch. Naypyidaw, Myanmar's new capital city, was built in secret by approximately 25 construction companies, at a cost of around 5 billion US dollars. The city is located 320 kilometers away from the former capital, Yangon, and was built on a massive scale, with broad boulevards, grandiose government buildings, and high-end hotels that are mostly unoccupied. Despite having a population of only around 1 million people, Naypyidaw is six times larger than New York City. With an area of over 7,000 square kilometers the city is heavily fortified with military facilities, including a massive military parade ground, and many of the government buildings are off-limits to civilians. All of these statistics suggest that the construction of Naypyidaw may have been motivated by more than just a need for a new capital city. Naypyidaw's location was strategically chosen to be remote and difficult to access, which makes it a challenging target for any potential enemies to invade. The city's road system is designed in a rather perplexing way, making it cumbersome to navigate from one part of the city to another. Additionally, the city boasts a 20-lane highway, which is large enough to serve as a runway for aircraft. All of these features suggest that the creation of Naypyidaw may have been motivated by more than just defensive purposes. Some experts speculate that the city's strategic location and design may have been intended to consolidate power and control within the Myanmar government as well as to establish a new center of economic growth and development. Whatever the true motivations behind the creation of Naypyidaw may be, the city remains a peculiar and enigmatic place, shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Naypyidaw's location was chosen because the surrounding regions were difficult for the government to control. By moving the capital to this new location, the government aimed to increase its control over these central areas. Its population is growing by around 6% annually. But with a current population of only around 750,000 people, it is significantly below the government's initial target of 9 million people. The city's overall design and layout, with its grandiose government buildings and military facilities, add to the sense of mystery and intrigue that surrounds it. Interestingly, Myanmar was not the only country to move its capital city in 2002. South Korea faced a similar problem of uneven economic growth and an overcrowded capital city when it proposed the construction of the Sejong administrative city in 2002. Seoul, the current capital city, dominates the country's economy, and half of the population lives in the metropolitan area, which amounts to around 25 million people. To address this issue, construction of Sejong began in 2007, and in 2012, government agencies started to relocate from Seoul to the new capital, located just 125 kilometers away. The move was not without controversy, with many critics arguing that the relocation was unnecessary and too expensive. Nevertheless, Sejong continues to develop, with a focus on becoming a center for research, innovation, and culture, while also relieving some of the pressures and congestion of Seoul. Despite being designed as a self-sufficient city with advanced infrastructure and amenities, Sejong has faced challenges in attracting government agencies to relocate from Seoul. The original plan was for all government agencies to move to Sejong by 2012, but today, almost half of the government ministries still remain in Seoul, along with the National Assembly. The city's smart technology, green spaces, 
and provisions for electric vehicles have not been enough to entice people to move. Strangely, many people still prefer to make a four-hour drive to their workplace in Seoul, rather than relocate to Sejong. The reasons for this may be multifaceted, but some speculate that people may be hesitant to move away from established networks and social connections in Seoul, or that the city's infrastructure is not yet fully developed. Nevertheless, Sejong remains an important project for the South Korean government, which hopes to see it become a successful and thriving city in its own right. Sejong has faced criticisms for its lack of transportation links and services, which many argue are not yet sufficient to draw people away from Seoul. While the city was designed with high-end housing and green spaces, some argue that it promotes car dependency and lacks community spirit. However, it is important to note that Sejong is still in its early stages, and has a population of only around 400,000 people, which is small compared to Greater Seoul's population of 25 million. As Seoul continues to grapple with issues like pollution, overcrowding, rising real estate prices, and heavy traffic, more families are starting to consider moving to Sejong for better living conditions. Despite this uncertainty, Sejong and Naypyidaw are not the only new cities being built from scratch. Many other countries around the world have embarked on similar projects in recent years, with varying degrees of success. In recent years, several ambitious urban development projects have been announced around the world. Among the most notable examples are NEOM, a futuristic city being built from scratch in Saudi Arabia, Bitcoin City in El Salvador, which aims to become a hub for digital innovation and crypto adoption, and Egypt's new administrative capital, a massive undertaking that has already made impressive strides towards completion. Egypt's ambitious new administrative capital project is a massive undertaking located 80 kilometers east of Cairo. Designed to house the government and an estimated 6.5 million people, the city is expected to become a major hub of economic and cultural activity in the region. Although the city currently stands largely empty, the first residents are expected to move in later this year. Despite this progress, the city still lacks a proper name, prompting the Egyptian government to launch a competition to find a suitable name and logo for the new capital. So why is Egypt investing so heavily in this new city? The answer lies in Cairo, the country's current capital. Egypt's new administrative capital is a massive megaproject located 80 kilometers east of Cairo, designed to house the government and an estimated 6.5 million people, and become a hub of economic and cultural activity in the region. With Cairo's population expected to grow to 38 million by 2050 and facing challenges of traffic congestion, pollution, and overcrowding, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi proposed the new city in 2014 to provide a modern and sustainable alternative. The project aims to offer world-class infrastructure, services, and amenities, while alleviating the burden on Cairo and improving the quality of life for millions of Egyptians. Despite being virtually empty, the new capital is rapidly taking shape, and the first residents are expected to move in later this year. Egypt's new administrative capital is a massive megaproject that is being constructed rapidly, with the visible completion of government, residential, and commercial buildings. Despite the pandemic, the project remains on schedule, and the government district is already 98% complete with the first department set to move and operate entirely from there by 2023. The new capital is expected to become a symbol of Egypt's commitment to modernization, innovation, and sustainability, providing new opportunities and possibilities for millions of Egyptians. Egypt's new administrative capital is set to become a world-class city, featuring state-of-the-art infrastructure, services, and amenities. Among the highlights are an international airport, a stadium and leisure district, a monorail linking the city to Cairo, and several impressive mosques and churches. The city is also home to the iconic tower, which has now reached its full height, making it the tallest skyscraper in Africa. But this title may not last long, as Egypt plans to start construction of a much taller skyscraper in the new capital later this year. Dubbed the Oblisco Capitali, the new tower will reach a staggering height of one kilometer, surpassing any building in the world. With these ambitious plans and grand visions, Egypt's new administrative capital aims to establish itself as a beacon of progress, prosperity, and innovation in the region and beyond. Egypt's new administrative capital is being funded through the sale of land by the government and billions of dollars in loans from China. The construction of the iconic tower, which is now the tallest skyscraper in Africa, is being carried out by a Chinese construction company. 
These financial ties have sparked intense political debate in Egypt, with some critics voicing concerns about the country's increasing dependence on China and the potential risks of such a close relationship. While supporters argue that the Chinese investments are crucial for the development of the new city and the country's economic growth, others warn that it could lead to a loss of sovereignty and control over important national assets. As Egypt continues to forge ahead with its ambitious plans for the new administrative capital, the debate over its financial and political implications is likely to remain a contentious issue for some time to come. The new administrative capital in Egypt has raised concerns about potential exclusivity, with some critics worrying that it could become a city exclusively for wealthy Egyptians. This could have negative consequences for Cairo, including a lack of business and investment, which could exacerbate issues of poverty and overpopulation. While the project is already well underway, it remains to be seen how successful it will be and how many people will actually move in. If you're curious about the concept of building new megacities from scratch, check out our video about Saudi Arabia's The Cube. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Build Bright, hit the like button, and share this video with your circle to support our work in bringing you insightful content about the future of urban development.